California, the earth shakes all the time. Okay, it's a known fact that we're gonna have an earthquake could happen right now. Could be a little bit like this, could be a rolling wave, or it could be a like you know, the like the train crash. You know, all of a sudden we're standing here and you're doing like this. Right, I'm not kidding you. And sometimes it could take down building bridges and all kinds of other stuff. Back in I don't remember where it was in the '90s, we had a pretty big one. It was uh, in Northridge, which is just north of LA. Thank you. And uh, it shook hard, you know, we all felt it. And it took down highways and, and collapsed pancake uh, building. And they found that there was a lot of issues with the way it was, uh, the wells were made. Uh, one of the bad things was the NS3M Lincoln wire was not. Uh, uh, it, what, what, why uh, they use uh, LA? You say right now in our 305 is what they use. Yeah, yeah they, they, use they quit. They quit using NS3M because it's too, too brittle. Mm -hmm. Okay, when it shook, it broke, and uh, and then also they went to the dog bone uh, on the moment uh, on the beam, uh, so that it would give it some flexibility away from the tension zone, and all that stuff. That that all came about because FEMA and all the engineers did uh, a failure analysis and. And then they figured out what went wrong for the most part. Mm -hmm. So then this thing came about. <clears throat> and what they found was um, there was a lot of uh, bad welds too in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the lower uh, uh, flange on the moment frame mm -hmm. because it's hard to go through the access yeah. hole and, and uh, people couldn't really do a very good job. So just doing a 3G, 4G didn't demonstrate enough skills to be able to get through that, that rat right hole with, without trapping all kinds of slag. And the NDT guys, we, you know, they're in cahoots because they go to lunch mm -hmm. with a boss. So they go, yeah, that's good. And when they turn off that NDT, uh, or when they turn off the UT machine, it all goes away, gets erased, mm -hmm. right? And so it's only what, they're, what the UT what the guy report reports. Right. And we gotta believe what he said because we don't know shit about UT, right? right. Yeah, yeah. so that, that'll eventually change with Face Array because it records it uh, on a hard drive and, and you can pull it up years later and see it mm -hmm. and, and you can't get away with shit now. But I don't know, a lot of the structural industry still doesn't want to use Face Array UT. The, uh, on the piping world, they already do, and it's made uh, uh, the inspector. They, it's made the welders miserable because it picks up everything. Okay, so that's what's happening here. Uh, you're going to be welding to the supplement to D11 uh, in one of the annexes. They show you the test configuration. In a nutshell, you have a uh, much larger plate. It's a it's a six by twelve welded to another six by twelve. Um, one of the plates is going to simulate the column, but how could it be a column if it's a butt joint? Well, that's just the only way you can uh, uh, make an arrangement in a test coupon so you can do bend test or guided bend test and tension test if you're going to qualify a procedure, say. Um, in this case, we're only qualifying the welder. We're going to take four bend tests. They're going to be side bends. And, uh, and there's going to be a, a restriction uh, wall that's going to simulate your column, okay? Um, <clears throat> uh, that's going to be all propped up with all the parts that we got there and then there's going to be another restriction plate it's going to be one inch thick it, it's going to simulate the, the right. beam web and it's going to have an access hole uh, that's cut out um, approximately like the uh, that the joint sketch here in the D1H shows okay when it's all said and done and you got the coupon tacked up it's going to look like this okay <clears throat> We're gonna have um, runoff tabs, or in other words, the backing is gonna be longer than the plates. We're gonna have a 15 inch long backing. It's gonna be quarter inch by one flat bar, and it's gonna stick out a, 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 a inch and a half, give you a runoff and run on tabs. Um, we will also uh, uh, use weld tabs to continue the, the uh, groove, the joint groove. Uh, and I recommend, highly recommend that you do a good job filling these tabs because uh, the four bend, guided bend specimens are going to be taking a quarter inch from the edge. In other words, we're going to cut off a quarter inch and discard that. And immediately after that, we're going to take uh, on, on each end of that test coupon, we're going to take a, uh, a side bend specimen. Okay. The other two come out right underneath the one inch uh, web, uh, beam web uh, simulating plate. Okay. And uh, so it's critical that you get a clean weld all the way through, especially on the root, because we're gonna spend, inspect the root, uh, root, uh, weld root. So here, here's how the inspection is gonna go. 
we're gonna do a visual on the finish pass uh, the cap call it cap call it cover pass the finish pass whatever you want to call it okay we're gonna do a uh, visual on that everything has to be flush or above it cannot have any underfill. it can have undercut uh, in the well beads that are adjacent to the base metal uh, but the undercut is limited to 132nd and so even though 132nd doesn't sound like much it, when you look at it and you shadow it with a flashlight at about 30 degrees you can really see that undercut and but uh, uh, we'll use an undercut gauge and uh, if it comes within a 30 second not to exceed that then it's acceptable all the way along even okay now we're going to also look for the well beads to make sure that they uh, have a gradual transition to the base uh, metal and to each other so you don't have any valleys uh, or, or, or sharp indentations in the well beads uh, so in other words, you got to have a smooth uh, cover on there and uh, nothing can be uh, higher than an eighth inch over the uh, base metal. So in other words, your weld reinforcement um, is a maximum uh, uh, one eighth. Okay. And uh, like we did with you guys yesterday, um, we're going to use a wire and, uh, and a plate. We're going to lay that wire on there. Uh, this would be after you uh, uh, remove all the restrictions and uh, then we're gonna just scan it like that. This is a 1 8 inch uh, GTHW or TIG wire. And I I anything that uh, is too high will show right away, okay? Yeah, it'll be something like this, okay? So right there is free, right there touches. If it, maybe if it just touches, mm -hmm. but it doesn't rock, it's okay. But if it starts to rock like that, it's succeeding. It's succeeding okay, so it could it could touch, but not not be too high. It cannot push the plate out. Okay, uh, this would be a, a fairly accurate way to tell if it's going to be within one eighth or not. If it clears, you're good. Up a little bit, you can, no grinding. You can repair no you can while grind. in process. Uh, there's nowhere in the code book D11 or D18 that says that the welder can't grind or gouge or chip. Uh, in process while you're while you're cleaning in between weld passes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if your cover is a little bit high uh, and you want to remove it and you have to replace it, okay? Uh, you can't just grind it down and say here you go because then I'm gonna certify you as a as a certified grinder man. Not <laughs> a okay. Uh, so yeah. Saying in the spot that that you grind down, you have to yeah, cover you, it. You have to cover it. And make sure you got it down enough where when you cover, 